Okay, recording has started. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, today, I'm quite privileged to have uh, Matthias. We're going to talk about uh, TMDL, tabular model, uh, I'm sorry, new tabular model language. Uh, I'll make a short introduction for myself. My name is Salil. I'm running the uh, Power BI Turkey user group. We are all ears, Matthias. We are listening to you. Oh, that was short indeed. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thanks very much. Um, uh, yes, um, I'm in London, so for me it's a uh, good afternoon, but uh, uh, whatever applies to everyone. Um, very happy to be here and uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's uh, hugely appreciated. Um, we're talking about TMDL um, and uh, uh, if you haven't heard about it before, then hopefully you'll uh, uh, walk out of the session um, with uh, much better awareness. Um, it's a fairly technical subject, um, I'm afraid, but um, uh, I hope you're all going to see uh, the potential and uh, impact of uh, what TMDL is. But before I get there, um, let me just introduce myself, uh, Matthias Tierbach. I'm uh, head of finance systems at YouGov currently, based in London. Uh, I'm, I'm German originally, which uh, I'm sure you can uh, gather from my accent. Uh, recent data platform MVP. Uh, I've uh, developed PBI tools, which is uh, a uh, uh, open source external tool. Uh, for deployments and, and source control in, uh, in Power BI. Um, and you can find all my details, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, and so on and so forth here. Um, and uh, just moving on. So what I want to achieve here is to obviously give an introduction into what uh, TIMDL, TMDL is, how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, uh, some tools, uh, some examples, and uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy for things to be rather interactive. So uh, I'm definitely want to keep some time for Q and A um, towards the end. Uh, so by all means, uh, do uh, come in and ask your questions. Um, it shouldn't just be a lecture. And. Uh, if if any questions come up whilst I'm speaking, by all means, uh, Halil or anyone else, yeah, uh, let me you. know. Let me know, and uh, I can take it uh, there and then. Uh, I'm I'm not super um, worried about uh, getting no, interrupted. No worries. I will help you with that. If there's any question, I will let you know. Okay, fantastic. Um. Also going to bring up the chat so I can actually see it myself, although I have to admit uh, it's it's fairly small. So if you could um, help me just making me aware if if a question comes up, that would um, definitely help a lot. All right, so let's um, set the stage here. So uh, TMDL is a language. Uh, for tabular models. Uh, TMDL uh, spelled out is the tabular model definition language. Um, and um, it's it basically supports uh, developers who work on data models, on, on tabular models, um, to uh, have a code representation of, of what makes up a model. Um, and uh, We've had a precursor, uh, which also had a four-letter acronym, uh, TMSL, uh, the Tabular Model Scripting Language. That's been around for a long time. Um, I believe going back to 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a JSON-based format, uh, fully supported, uh, and uh, if, uh, you've ever worked with tabular editor, for instance, uh, or with Visual Studio um, SSDT, um, you'll be familiar with so-called BIM files, B-I-M. Uh, those are basically JSON files that uh, 
pretty much contain all the source code making up a, a data model. And uh, that actually had some limits, some limitations, uh, which is precisely why um, we've got a new language, TMDL, uh, that's supposed to uh, overcome those. Now, let me also explain uh, why I'm talking about that. Um, I had the huge honor of uh, actually working directly with the product team over the last, I don't know, nine months or so um, as an external contributor, you know, similar to what, for instance, Daniel um, did around external tools a few years ago and other people as well. Um, so uh, that's why, uh, even though I'm not from or with Microsoft, um, I've made a contribution directly to Power BI, which is basically uh, the Tindal TMDL language. So that's why I'm here talking about it. Um, and if we're looking at this slide um, and look at the title, TMDL is readable. So readability um, is, is one of the key aspects that uh, we wanted to achieve here. If I just zoom in a little bit, um, we can see in the old world, Timsel, um, we basically had uh, lots and lots of noise going on. Uh, in this case, uh, it's just an example of uh, uh, various columns defined uh, on the customer table. Um, and um, that works well for machines, but it's um, actually problematic um, if, if you want to make sense of that uh, uh, as a human, if you want to uh, review changes. So the equivalent of what we're seeing on the left um, over here is arguably much more readable, right? Uh, there's a, a, a lot less noise in here. Um, one particular column definition um, underneath my customer table, in this case, cus customer key, um, is actually you know, much more straightforward. Uh, everything we can see here uh, immediately makes sense, right? So we've got a data type, we've got a format string, um, we've got some Boolean properties and so on and so forth. So um, that's one aspect uh, why there's Tyndall. The second one is, um, and this is a real big deal, um, it's meant to be editable, uh, and particularly in uh, basically any text editor. Um, and um, uh, that is, um, not something uh, which was ever supported before. Uh, you know, the only way that you were able to effectively edit uh, a tabular model was um, using tabular editor. Um, so uh, using, uh, uh, you know, a, a proprietary tool uh, with a GUI. Um, uh, but uh, in in order to support uh, pro developers, uh, people who want direct um, source code access, um, we needed a format which uh, ad allows you to pretty much use any um, text editor. And so this is another side-by-side -side example here. When we have embedded DAX expressions, just to give one example, uh, there is a real uh, problem with the previous JSON um, format, for instance, we can see that uh, uh, so mouse, where's my mouse gone? Oh, here we go. Um, we can see uh, here we go. Got it. Uh, we can see we've we've got um, lots of uh, quote signs and commas and uh, escape characters. Um, and uh, trying to edit that one in a text editor is, is virtually impossible. You're, you're bound to get some problems here. Whereas on this side, um, we can see very nicely, this is actually a DAX expression um, that you can copy paste, for instance, from uh, DAX Studio. So that's the other um, big advantage. And then the third one is that uh, uh, Tyndall is meant to be um, collaborative in the sense that uh, it should allow entire teams to actually collaborate uh, on changes um, without uh, there being uh, any conflicts or at least uh, you know um, the risk of particular conflicts should be as small as possible. Um, in the Timso world, uh, unless you were using a particular tabular editor feature, you basically had one single file. 
Um, and uh, uh, in this case, the example contoso.bim, and we can already see, uh, you know, uh, without going into too much detail here, those files uh, tend to be really large, right? We, we have four digit line numbers over there, and that's actually a, a relatively small, uh, relatively trivial model. Over here, um, in addition to actually having uh, a, a very good readable uh, definition, uh, we also have a standardized um, folder structure how the entire model definition is broken out. Uh, so for instance, as we can see here, uh, each table um, actually is represented um, in a dedicated file. In this case, customer.tmd, or down here we've got sales.tmd. Um, and that already helps uh, keeping each individual file substantially smaller, and uh, it um, ultimately helps avoiding conflicts uh, between uh, different changes being done by different developers. Here we go. Um, just a before we look into some uh, real examples, just a recap uh, of the so-called tabular object model. Uh, so. Um, if you uh, ever worked with tabular editor or if you ever looked into the uh, uh, inner workings of a BIM file, uh, you will be familiar with uh, this particular structure where basically uh, a model, which is uh, effectively a data set, um, is a hierarchical structure of data sources, uh, tables, uh, relationships, perspectives, cultures, roles, annotations, and tables uh, in particular, uh, they are basically the most important aspect. They contain columns, partitions, measures, hierarchies. Um, and um, uh, so that's just a reminder. And um, uh, that is something which we'll see when we look at our example in tabular editor in a second, um, and also when we look at the uh, TMDL definitions. Are there any questions at this point before I move on to some examples? Not yet, but I have a question. Is it okay. fully supported in Visual Studio or only in uh, Tabular Editor? Um, I'll get there in a second, okay. actually. OK. All right, so let me just move on. So tooling. Um, Exactly your question. Um, we have um, today, so TMDL uh, is uh, TMDL is currently in public preview, right? So this is not GA yet. Uh, there's still um, some work happening uh, in terms of uh, ironing out certain uh, bugs, uh, as well as um, actually improving tooling. So. Um, I'll, I'll explain where we're at today. So tabular editor two and three, so two, the open source version and three, the commercial version, uh, both support Timnal. I'll show you in a second. Um, Visual Studio Code um, supports Timnal. Uh, I'm going to show you that in a second. Remember, I was talking about being able to use any text editor, so uh, being able to um, read and modify a model definition using VS Code was one of our key objectives here. Uh, Power BI Desktop today um, does not support Timdle yet, um, but um, uh, there is work underway um, which will uh, be become available later in the year. Uh, and uh, at that point, um, uh, we, we will have full support Power BI Desktop as well. And then there's PBI Tools. Uh, I may already mentioned that that's my own external tool, and that's also uh, uh, also fully supports. So let me switch uh, over to an example here. So here we go. Um, I've got, well, in fact, uh, let me show you in, let me show you here. Right, so, um, this is my example data set. Um, I've actually got a live connection here. Uh, so this is a data set that's already deployed and um, we can uh, see uh, customer date metric product uh, promotion store time intelligence. It's just one of those uh, example Contoso um, data sets uh, in, in this particular case, actually one from SQL BI. 
which we're going to be using here. So uh, pretty straightforward. Um, there's um, a sales table, uh, which is our fact table, and then a bunch of dimensions. And um, uh, looking at this same um, model in VS Code, we get this view. So over here, we can see uh, there's a model subfolder, um, which happens to contain um, a table subfolder, cultures, and then a bunch of TMD, uh, TM, um, uh, TMDL files. Uh, and uh, if I expand tables, you're actually going to see um, exactly what we saw in uh, our um, Power BI desktop view earlier, right? We've got a customer table, date, info, metrics, so on and so forth. Um, so basically, uh, every um, table um, is um, represented in a dedicated file, and then other portions of the model, like relationships, expressions, cultures, um, they all exist as standalone TM, uh, TMDL files with a .tmd extension, and uh, uh, they each uh, define a certain aspect um, of our model. And um, uh, that is something which, as you can see, I can just uh, roam around um, in VS Code, but I can also go to Tabular Editor. I can go to Open from Folder, and if I then select uh, this model folder that's that we're looking at over here and open up, I can see, here we go, uh, this is the exact same model um, with all my tables, with all my shared expressions, with all my relationships. Um, so you can see, uh, you know, it's a fully supported uh, file format. Um, with a standardized folder structure that uh, can uh, be viewed, opened, and edited in various tools. So let's make a change here uh, and see um, what we're actually getting. So for instance, uh, if I do what any good um, model developer um, <laughs> should uh, always do by default, and which unfortunately um, uh, rarely happens. Uh, in an ideal world, we would have descriptions uh, on our tables and our measures and our columns. Um, I don't have that here, so I'm just going to add a description to my customer table, and then I'm going to say contains or uh, contoso customers. Here we go. And if I now go and save my changes, and go in here um, into my um, source control view and specifically go over here to my customer table, I can see uh, that this particular line was actually inserted, right? So this is uh, one example um, uh, where, uh, right, so the, the example here uh, actually shows us how descriptions on particular elements within uh, our model um, have explicit syntax support, right? Uh, we're not saying description colon and, and then anything here. We're actually putting the description on top of, uh, in this case, the table declaration um, introduced with three forward slashes. So whenever, when, whenever uh, we've got three forward slashes, um, that basically indicates uh, that the item on the next line um, uh, is being described. Um, unfortunately, as we can see, uh, there are a bunch of other uh, changes which uh, which came in here. Uh, those are um, that's actually pr pretty pretty good that we can see them right now because um, those are all. Uh, uh, blank lines uh, which have disappeared. So let me just explain uh, why that's happened here. Uh, I already explained earlier that uh, right now TMDL is in public preview, right? We're still making updates. Uh, we are finding and fixing bugs and um, we're making some minor modifications uh, in terms of the output format. So this uh, is one example. 
um, where basically the um, model which I loaded earlier that was produced um, with a with a previous version of Tyndall, uh, which happened to actually insert uh, two blank lines um, uh, here, for instance, right? And uh, at some point. Um, we found that um, that there was no necessity for that. Uh, in fact, uh, it it didn't really add any value. Um, so the latest preview release of Timdo removed that, and uh, we can see for that reason, just by me having saved the entire model back, I'm actually getting all of these uh, changes now. Um, uh, but that's it, right? Uh, there's really nothing else to it. If, if, if I go through the various files that show up as having changes, it's basically just that. So why don't I go ahead and um, uh, basically commit those changes uh, and this one, uh, there we go, right? So if I just go here and if I just um, unstage that one, here we go, right. So, um, just going to say upgraded uh, to latest Timnal format. If I commit that here, uh, now uh, we, we can see what should have happened earlier, right? So, this is the only change, and I can say basically added a uh, description to customers. Um, Table. Here we go. Uh, right. Cool. So I've got no more pending changes now, uh, but I've got two commits um, which are ready to be pushed, and um, uh, I can uh, also, if I want to, um, go and. Um, Save this as a BIM file. Um, if I if I wanted to uh, go back and forth between the classic uh, TMSL and and the new TMDL, that's all possible uh, using Tablet Editor, as you can see. Um, so if I go here and save that and call it uh, Contoso.bim, there we go. Right. Uh, I go here now. We can see there's this new file, um, and it's actually um, a very good uh, example, right? So this is over 2,000 lines of JSON code, uh, which is what we were getting in the old world, uh, whereas in the new world, uh, we still have quite a few lines, but they, they're actually very well structured, and everything, as you can see, is uh, very readable, right? Any questions at this point? Yeah, I think Christian has a question. Christian, could you please unmute yourself and ask your question? It's too long to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was uh, thinking about the obvious uh, benefits of Timdel for large enterprises and uh, multiple developers working on the same file. Mm -hmm. And this is great when we have the Power BI desktop supporting Git integration and everything. This is huge. But uh, do you have anything, do you think this is uh, uh, usable for Power BI beginners trying to version their own files? So let's say uh, I'm a beginner trying to work and uh, iterating on my own file. Do you think Timdel together with uh, Tumblr editor and the Git integration uh, will be helpful for beginners? Or do you have any uh, training materials planned for this? Um, well, yes, it all comes down to training, right? Um, so mm -hmm. uh, the question, I mean, I guess the question is, you know, what does it mean to be a beginner, right? So um, if beginner means um, all your familiar with and used to uh, uh, binary PBX files, you know, uh, working in, in Power BI Desktop and then getting those files out and, and possibly publishing them up into a workspace, um, then in that case, um, you would possibly never have thought about uh, using Git, using source control, um, using branches uh, and pull requests, exactly. right? Um, so, uh, and, and, 
You wouldn't necessarily have thought about it because up until now, Microsoft um, has never actually provided much guidance and, and or tooling in that space, right? Um, so that's only just changing now, right? If you followed uh, what's what was happening over the last two weeks, uh, uh, Fabric was announced. Fabric actually yeah, yeah. Uh, brings um, source control integration for Fabric workspaces, um, which is currently limited to Power BI reports and Power BI data sets. Um, but um, uh, that basically means that for the first time, you know, we've got full source control support uh, for Power BI artifacts uh, from Microsoft. So only now we're in a position where this is actually accessible, right? Uh, so uh, I'm definitely planning on, you know, making uh, more training and guidance available. And uh, I would hope that many other people will uh, will do the same um, because now's the time for people to uh, learn about benefits of source control, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I appreciate um, th there is a learning curve um, and particularly, you know, if, if you're coming from a PBIX and or Excel work, that may not necessarily be something that's sort of natural, right? So um, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, all, we'll all depend on, you know, getting getting some good guidance here. Just um, uh, if if you're serious in sort of getting into that space, uh, Rui, uh, who is the um, uh, product manager of um, Timdle and, and many other de developer focus bits in, at Microsoft, and myself, uh, we're doing a joint training session um, in September as part of Power BI Next Step, um, mm -hmm. where we're spending an entire day. Uh, you can still get tickets. Um, we're spending an entire day doing exactly what you just asked about, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We are assuming that people um, want to sort of understand, uh, you know, what, what are best practices? What are the tools? How do I get started when it comes to source control? Um, uh, so that's where we're going to start. And then we're going to bring, um, uh, we're going to show everything that's available at that point, which will definitely be more than what we have today uh, in terms mm -hmm. of tooling, right? Timnel will be one aspect there, but there there are other things which are which I'm not allowed to talk about right now, but uh, which will happen um, between now and September. And so, um, if if you're really serious about um, uh, hopping onto the source control train and and figuring out what it takes uh, to actually um, change your, your development workflows accordingly, that would be a fantastic uh, opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. to, to okay, come. thank you. And I think that is September 21st, if I'm not mistaken. You can look it up on uh, Power BI oh, next time. Oh. Okay, I have one question. Uh, apart from being more readable and uh, having, sh having short uh, lines of codes, Currently, is there any additional feature set <clears throat> in Tyndale uh, compared to TMSL? Um, no, uh, there, there's nothing additional because at the end of the day, uh, both Tyndale and TMSL are basically just different file formats for the underlying model, right? Um, and uh, uh, you know, the, the whole point of BIM or Timdle is uh, to basically give you a file that uh, you can put in source control uh, where as you're making changes, and as we've just seen that, you can actually see in a very granular way um, how those changes are reflected, right? Um, so uh, th there's there's nothing in Timdle that you couldn't do in Timsel and vice versa, right? There's nothing in Timsel, uh, uh, TMSL that you couldn't do in Timdle. Um, the whole point is to basically support the pro developer personas, right? People who are explicitly interested in team collaboration and source control uh, and being able to do granular change tracking. Um, uh, and giving those people um, tooling that is uh, Microsoft supported uh, and explicitly uh, being shipped by the, the product team. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, cool. So let's, um, let's talk about tooling a little more. So you can also see here um, that we actually get some nice color coding. 
so why is that? Uh, looking down here, you can see that uh, VS Code actually uh, understands that this is a TMDL file. Uh, in, in fact, that's the so-called language mode. Uh, and in uh, it uh, infers us from the from the file extension. So basically, uh, I have a an extension um, enabled uh, in in my VS Code um, version um, uh, in my VS Code installation, uh, which adds support for uh, TMDL, which is why I'm actually getting some nice color coding here. Um, we are planning to uh, make that extension publicly available. Um, if you've seen previous presentations, we've been talking about this for a while. There were uh, just a few delays, but um, I believe uh, the plan is to actually come out with a very first beta version later this month, uh, as in June. Um, so uh, what you can see here on my screen um, should actually be available um, to, um, to everyone. And in fact, um, there is already, if I just go to my browser, there's already um, a repo on GitHub under the Microsoft organization, which is called VS Code Timdal. That's currently empty, but uh, uh, that's um, ultimately where the VS Code extension is going to be published and maintained. So as you can see, this is this is a public repo, um, and it uh, will be shipped as open source uh, and will also invite co uh, community contributions, uh, but it's owned by Microsoft, obviously. Um, so uh, yeah, just stay tuned and um, uh, hopefully um, we'll, we'll get there in the next few weeks. Um, so that's that. Um, so the other thing I wanted to uh, mention, um, Let's have a look. No, let's have a look uh, here. Yeah. Um, one particular challenge when it comes to tabular models is the fact that we basically have um, object definitions like this, where we have, in this case, a column object, which happens to have some properties, right? Um, so th that's all str pretty straightforward. Um, but in addition to those simple um, key value dictionaries, uh, we also have embedded expressions, right? Uh, and um, in, an, in a standard tabular model, there are plenty of those. So this is one example here. Uh, we have an, a partition of type M, which is basically nowadays the default partition type, uh, which means there's an M or Power Query expression which defines um, how data is loaded. And uh, this is um, where we get additional complexity with respect to Timdu as a language, because uh, down here, everything is key value, but here um, it's actually Power Query, right? A completely different syntax, completely different language, um, and um, it's um, completely embedded here. Uh, now, you can also see that um, by default, um, indentation actually matters, right? So if you're familiar with um, uh, with YAML, which is um, a um, markup language, um, uh, you know that in YAML, uh, basically keeping this sort of white space is, is necessary for the contents to be understood and 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 read correctly and uh, that's what timdo does too however only when we're actually talking about objects and object properties when we're talking about those embedded expressions even so i can do this right uh, i can completely remove that white space uh, or i can i can add a uh, completely arbitrary white space, and it's all fine, and it's all supported. Uh, there, there's absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. Um, and um, that is intentional. Uh, that is uh, so that we can explicitly allow people to actually use VS Code or any other editor and make um, 
uh, and, and copy paste, for instance, you know, w w without having to follow, you know, extremely strict indentation rules. Um, so just to show that that's actually um, correct. Uh, so I've, I've just saved my file, which means um, I've actually got uh, this change here. If I go back to tabular editor and read uh, this back, there we go. Um, so we are looking at the date table and at the partition inside the date table. Now, uh, remember what I've done here, right? I basically added uh, a whole bunch of extra tab characters uh, and I indented the entire M expression quite uh, far to the right. Now let's see what's happening here because this is also pretty cool. Look at that. This is this is actually um, what was uh, what that looks like internally. Uh, there is no indentation whatsoever, right? So so this extra white space which I added is only there for readability, but it doesn't actually get um, injected into my model at all. This that's this is this is only uh, sort of a syntax feature. Um, uh, looking at the underlying expression directly, uh, how it's represented in memory, you see it's all clean, right? And so um, the, if I now go and actually save this one back, uh, and in fact, why don't we do this side by side? Uh, so if I save this one back, let's see what happens. There we go. Uh, I don't know why it's being funny. Uh, I didn't. Right. Uh, OK. Um, so we can. Oh, I see. OK. Uh, so you can see that um, um, it defaulted back um, to the same indentation I had previously. Right, um, which basically shows that w whenever you're writing your Timnal definition back to disk, um, there's there's a standard format applied. So in a way, it's always predefined uh, by default. Um, currently, there's no way for you to customize that either. So uh, th 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 there's a default format, and that's the only format. And um, uh, um, it is something to be aware of, right? Uh, so basically, you are free to sort of format your code uh, when you make manual edits um, as much as you like. If you then save it back, however, um, default formatting rules will be applied. Um, but I think that's a, a benefit, that's a feature, because it means that um, you're always going to get um, sort of uh, pretty fine uh, code uh, if you um, uh, w once you put stuff into source control um, and uh, the same applies. So this is Power Query M, right? The same applies to DAX, right? So this is a calculation group, time intelligence calculation group. We can see that here. Um, we can also see how very neat and and concise the definition of my calculation group items is, right? Uh, very straightforward. Uh, and in fact, you can see that in this case, where we have a single line DAX expression, um, it's actually, it, it remains on the same line. Uh, we don't even need line breaks here to make it even more concise, right? Um, and uh, so same thing applies. You can see here, this one has three tabs. If I go to tabular editor and look at the corresponding time intelligence calculation item, so in this case, quarter to date, here we go, no white space whatsoever. Um, and uh, again, I, I can, I'm not, I'm not going to do that now because you've seen it before, but uh, I can arbitrarily change indentation here and it will all be valid timed and it can be read. Um, uh, accordingly. Any other questions at this point? No? I have a question. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, question. 
will it be um, possible to format DAX or Power Query using the APIs from DAX formatter or Power Query formatter inside Teamdo? Um, so th th that's the intention and the ambition for this VS Code extension, which I mm -hmm. talked about earlier, right? Um, but it's not something th that's not going to come straight away, you know. So uh, it's not in the first wave. Yeah, yeah. So the the, the very first beta release uh, that's coming hopefully th this month, June, right? Uh, it it will be it will focus on um, syntax highlighting and basic color coding, right? Um, and more sophisticated formatting uh, and uh, prettifying features will come later. Uh, this is also all the question of, you know, funding and resources. And uh, um, obviously, the hope is, you know, of making this open source and uh, allowing con community contribution. The hope is that um, community members will uh, be, you know, will have an incentive <laughs> to. Um, uh, help out and uh, you know uh, you know m make uh, uh, add add certain features like that to, to the uh, extension, but um, obviously we'll we'll have to see if and when that happens. Anything else? Cool. Um, all right. Uh, anything else I can show here? So uh, right. Um, the other thing as well, um, so th this model uh, where we have a subfolder called tables and a subfolder called cultures, um, and then the, the various cultures and tables uh, represented in individual files, uh, that's the out of the box behavior. And right now it's the only behavior you can get, right? Uh, right now uh, there's no way to actually customize um, the uh, uh, folder structure. If um, we're in public preview, right? So this is not the final product yet. If if you feel very strongly about you know having customization abilities here, or uh, if you feel very strongly that uh, certain things should be split out differently, please do feedback to the product team and Rui in particular, because uh, uh, changes like that will only happen based on feedback and input, right? Um, for now, this is what you're getting. There's always going to be a model.tmd file, which basically has high level definitions like compatibility level, for instance. Um, it also has all the query groups in it. Uh, we will always have um, a dedicated file containing all shared M expressions. In this case, they're all parameters, which you can see because of the um, meta uh, keyword here. Uh, we always we're always going to have a dedicated file for relationships and so on and so forth. Um, if we had data sources defined here, which is uh, not the case for Power BI data models, but for um, Azure Analysis Services, uh, they would also show up under a dedicated subfolder. Um, cool. Let me uh, just move on here. So we've seen that. Um, I can share the slides later, but um, um, just wanted to point out um, a, a bunch of links. Um, in fact, I've got them open in my Chrome. So here we go. So first of all, uh, this is uh, the original uh, announcement for the first public preview, which came out back in April. So it was about two months ago, uh, written by Rui, who's the program manager. So that one has... Uh, a bunch of uh, paragraphs explaining why we did that and uh, and what the intention is. Then we have um, a dedicated section on Microsoft Learn. Uh, so this is all um, part of the uh, analysis source documentation under developer, uh, where we can basically see here. We've got the Tom object model. We've got TMSL, the precursor, and then we've got TMDL, new definition language. Um, there's a, a fairly lengthy article here that explains all the basics. 
can see that. Um, and there's another one which um, it basically provides a little tutorial on how to get started. So we've got that. And uh, one thing I definitely want to point out as well, and there's a link to it in the slides. Uh, this session, which was part of uh, Microsoft Build from a couple of weeks ago, um, is very, very relevant for anyone uh, who considers themselves a, a professional BI developer. Um, Christian and Zoe um, talk about um, what's been released for um, uh, professional developers as part of the Fabric announcement. Uh, but in addition to that, they actually give some very, very interesting insights into stuff um, that hasn't been released yet, but uh, uh, already exists sort of uh, internally. So I can highly recommend uh, uh, looking at this, I, I believe the session is available uh, for free. You just have to sign up. And um, uh, Rui, actually, even though his name is not mentioned here, um, he he also um, has a few minutes uh, where he talks about um, how we are developer mode and uh, Timdal in particular. So I uh, can definitely recommend that. Uh, and to... Uh, the only other bit I've got here, yes. So remember how I started off uh, showing the um, uh, tree, the hierarchy tree, uh, uh, which defines uh, the, the various element types, um, uh, making up a, a tabular model. So this is for the developers among you or someone who wants to go really deep. Um, uh, with respect to what's actually represented in a uh, Timnil document. So uh, here we actually have um, uh, the, the very detailed technical definitions. Uh, I'm just going to show you so you understand uh, what that refers to. So if we're, if we're going back here, if we're going to model, we can see, for instance, a model has so-called data access options, right? So if you want to find out, um, well, what is that? And you know, wh what are the various um, child uh, properties um, I can specify here? You can go in here, you can find model class, right? So basically, when, whenever we're introducing an object, that's, that's a class. Um, and then in here, we have data access options showing up as one of the properties. Um, you can just click here. And if you want to see, um, well, what are the possible data access options? Just click on this link here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five different properties. Um, so one of them here is fast combine. If we look at that, it says, whether private privacy settings um, should be ignored. There we go, right? So um, just wanted to show how you can actually go back and forth and uh, ultimately look up um, uh, supported properties and what their definition is. Ultimately, uh, that is something which should also feed into this VS Code extension so that uh, when hovering over here, you should actually see you know, a little uh, pop up uh, giving you the definition, but uh, that's down the line. That's not something that's coming straight away. Um, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show. Unless there are any other questions. Yeah, we have two questions for two similar questions for you uh, from Christian and me. Uh, yeah. Uh, to my understanding, Tyndall is going to replace the TMSL in the future. Am I right? Or um, they will live side by side. They will live side by side. There's absolutely no intention to replace uh, TMSL in in terms of what the product supports, uh, but it will replace TMSL in various tools, right? Um, so uh, you've we've you've already seen uh, uh tabular editor uh, let me just show you also how to actually get there so in tabular editor you have to make a choice uh at this point so you go to preferences and serialization and right now it's up to you um whether you want to stick to the uh proven 
legacy JSON format, which is this one, that's the default, um, or whether you want to switch um, into the new Timdo preview, right? If you do so, there's a little warning coming up here that says it's in preview and, you know, some things may change. Um, but ultimately, uh, once Timdo is GA, uh, the default will change, right? And it, it, it will be what you get um, out of the box. And the same applies, for instance, to um, Fabric uh, uh, um, Git integration, right? Um, so uh, I mentioned Git integration earlier. Uh, at the moment, um, if you have a data set in a Fabric workspace, you actually get a single BIM file uh, in a few months. Uh, and certainly by the time Fabric goes for the GA, uh, you will get Timdle there. And uh, that will be the default and it will be the only format. So uh, for, for Fabric uh, Git, there won't be a choice even, right? Um, so in, in that respect, it's going to replace it, uh, uh, you know, in the sense, you know, where do you actually see Timdle? But um, technically, Timdle is always going to be supported, you know, if you're actually using client tools uh, and, it, you know, if, if you're interacting directly um, with uh, client libraries. Thank you, Matthias. Mm -hmm. Another question from the audience. Please don't be shy. Do you think we will have that Git integration, Timdale and uh, versioning stuff in Pro License 2? Um. I believe it's yeah, a yes. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I wanted developer. I wanted to make sure that I didn't say the wrong thing. Uh, but um, th that that question came up uh, a lot um, during build. You know, w when Fabric was uh, publicly released. Um, so yes, absolutely, because uh, Git integration is a Fabric feature, right? So um, as long as you're actually in a Fabric workspace as opposed to a legacy Power BI workspace, you're getting that, irrespective um, of what uh, licensing model you're using. Uh, key is uh, that um, you're either on a fabric capacity or that you've upgraded um, your workspace into fabric. Um, and um, if you keep your workspace as a Power BI Pro workspace, you're not getting it, right? So this is a fabric feature. It's not actually, it's, it has got nothing to do with your Power BI license. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what's being released as part of Power BI Desktop I can say that because it it was already mentioned, for instance, in that video. Um, uh, it also makes no difference uh, or, or doesn't distinguish licensing, right? So uh, you know you're you're going to get uh, the um, folder export from Power BI Desktop uh, even without a premium license. Thanks a lot. Could you please unmute yourself here if I'm not pronouncing your name incorrectly? Yeah, hi. It's uh, Guy, but that doesn't that right. doesn't matter. Sorry. It's uh, I'm from Norway, so um, yeah, super interesting. Um, I mean, uh, very interesting to hear about the integration with Fabric, of course. But uh, given that, so Fabric has has Delta tables as as its core, um, and one of the key features in Delta, of course, is um, time travel. Um, will that then be possible to work with with from uh, from you know uh using um and i uh, what is it tim no, tim doll sorry i, I keep thinking kimball sorry uh, it, that was intentional wasn't it but um yeah uh, uh, any of the sort of delta features will they be ingrained into tindle or is that too too premature to ask maybe no no it's a great question and it's really a good opportunity to clear up a few things um so Timdo is about model metadata. Timdo is about defining, you know, which tables and columns and measures you've got in your model. Timdo doesn't do anything with respect to data uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what's actually being loaded into particular tables. Um, and I think that's what your question relates to, right? Uh, when you're talking about uh, time travel and framing uh, and basically looking sort of at, at different versions um, of data in your in your data tables. Um, that's got nothing to do with um, 
with with your with your metadata with your model definition, right? Uh, and th so that's also precisely you know th that's where the D comes from in TMDL, right? It's this is the tabular model definition language. It it just uh, basically says, for example, um, that. Uh, I've got uh, this measure called commit ID, which happens to use this particular DAX expression, right? Um, or that uh, this table happens to have a column called label of type string, right? That's it. Um, and uh, uh, anything relating to uh, loading data and uh, and refreshes is out of scope here. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. Any further question? Okay, with uh, Power BI free license, we could theoretically keep version for ourselves. Yeah. Yes, that's true. So yeah, that's that's one really significant change that's going to come um, in the next Power BI desktop release. And again, if you watch that video, which I um, referred to earlier, you're you're going to see a nice preview of that. Uh, so that's why I can talk about it because it's already in the public domain. Always got to be super careful as an MVP. What do you actually mention? <laughs> the feature is quite bright and overwhelming. OK, uh, I think we don't have further questions from the audience. Christian, are, are you writing your question or messaging someone else? All right. Well, in that yeah, case, there we go. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. Um, uh, thanks a lot, Matthias. It was a great session. Uh, I learned a lot from you today. Yeah, so so watch that space. And but if 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 this is something you're interested in, either in terms of getting into or uh, imp implementing in your um, in your own uh, workflows, um, reach out, give give us feedback, give Rui feedback or myself. You know, uh, uh, we are uh, very keen to to have those inputs. Uh, we're still fixing things. Um, and ultimately, you know, want to have a really good source control uh, story for models. I'm interested. In, interesting that no one asked about reports, but but uh, <laughs> uh, that that's a whole different story. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Matthias, for joining me today. It was a great session. I've learned a lot uh, from you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Have a good day then. Okay. Bye, everyone.